Hello and uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I can't really see any of you, so uh, I think the, I don't know if the videos are on or not, but I, I guess you are there and listening. <laughs> um, uh, yes, so this work uh, was actually presented at the FISC already two times uh, um, at the most recent poster party. You might have seen the poster if you were there. Um, and you, you remember, and you have an even better memory if you were not at the poster party, but still remember, um, because uh, the, the very prelim preliminary um, version of this work I also presented in 2008 um, at an EFISC seminar already. Uh, but now, <coughs> yeah, this work has grown, and in the meantime, it's all. Uh, The, um, um, the analytical part, or actually there was no analytical part, and then I met uh, Naji, uh, who, um, so we, then we continued this together, so all the, so he managed to, to solve everything analytically in the pair approximation of this model that I'm, uh, that I'm going to present. All right, so I will talk about altruism. Let's first uh, uh, see some examples of what altruism actually is in animals. Um, so there are very, various forms of this, uh, for instance, food sharing. So some, uh, for instance, vampires, they, uh, they share the, the blood, so the food that they obtained um, by hunting, sort of. Uh, they might share it with others who were unsuccessful uh, in uh, obtaining food, so the others, uh, the others don't starve. Um, then famous example is uh, alarm calls in monkeys. Um, <clears throat> so um, when a predator nears the group, a group of uh, of monkeys, uh, one gives an alarm call to the others, so they can actually um, flee. But of course, this comes also at a cost to the the one who gives the alarm call because uh, they might be discovered first and then be the, the become <clears throat> then there's also kind of uh, medical is when a fellow event and uh, threatened to to suffocate then uh, that that uh, other animal can be helped by, by taking them to the surface um, so they don't, uh, they don't lack oxygen. Um, so all, in all these examples we see, okay, there's, uh, there's an action with um, some benefit for another to the individual performing it. And uh, so the reason why we are and also actually a large part of, um, of game theory and evolutionary game theory um, is, is wondering about this, uh, this uh, phenomenon of altruism is, the fo is that uh, at first uh, sight it's, it, it seems to be um, in, in discordance or in disagreement with, with natural uh, selection according to Darwin because uh, um, natural, natural selection, <coughs> uh, most offspring, um, they, those who have the most offspring, they take, they transfer their genes to the next uh, generation. So those genes that are kind of run the program to produce most offspring, uh, they will, um, uh, will go extinct. Um, <coughs> So if now these genes code for actually incurring a disadvantage to your own reproduction, to, to code for lowering uh, your own reproductive fitness because you kind of share part of your food um, or your other forces in life um, with others uh, who don't necessarily have the same genes as you, then your own genes um, um, have a... a, a a disadvantage in, in being transferred to the next generation. So the question in short is, how can then altruism arise 
can be sustained. You probably know a lot of Um, works that deal with this questions, the, uh, this question in evolutionary game theory, and um, so I will now would have to go into a long, long uh, introduction, but I will not, uh, I will not do that in, in case of uh, the, uh, the paper has sixty reference any references in this, uh, this talk because then it just becomes step to to arrive where we want to arrive namely at the model and uh, and mention some concepts some basic concepts um, that are already uh, known to explain at least in part how altruism can arise and be sustained and one is um, kin selection so you don't uh, uh, you don't actually apply you the altruistic act to to anyone, but uh, just to your um, to relatives with whom you share at least part of your genetic information, and in this way, um, by the by an altruistic act, you still support uh, indirectly also your own genes to be transferred to the next generation. And uh, similarly for reciprocity, so. Um, mutual altruism between selected pairs of agents. So there's kind of a social uh, structure on which uh, things happen repeatedly. So one helps the other and uh, this goes also backward. And um, <clears throat> then both these uh, mechanisms kind of mixed together, they can be modeled by placing agents uh, in a space, in a discrete neighborhood space, in the simplest case, um, uh, on a lattice. And then um, uh, it's important that the same structure is used for the acts and uh, also for the um, it, uh, um, it's it's applied to uh, to a neighbor on the lattice, but uh, your off the the offspring of that agent who might perform the altruistic act is also likely to be on adjacent sites. Okay, but we'll see that now when we when we actually come to the model definition. <coughs> okay, so we uh, even though we also tried things on on networks, we just do everything here now for simplicity on a square lattice. And each lattice site can be in one of three states at a time. It can be occupied by a cooperator, so known as altruist, we use these synonymously, um, or by a defector, or it can be empty. Okay, so in this way, we already, um, referring back to the title, we have some um, population dynamics in the sense that the population can uh, grow or shrink depending on how many uh, sites on the lattice are actually occupied. Um, then for the dynamics, so I'll look at how uh, a birth e event uh, works. Um, so birth happens first of all at at unit rate, at rate one that we're defining. And uh, so what's happening there is, okay, a site um, um, uh, and the neighboring site, I and J together, are chosen. And if the site I is occupied with an agent and the site J is unoccupied, is empty, then a copy of that agent at I is also put at J. So uh, agent at I puts offspring into site J. And this happens exactly the same uh, for both types of agents. So cooperators or altruists and defectors are, uh, when it comes to the birth uh, part of the process, are indistinguishable. They are both just uh, uh, reproducing in this way at rate one. <clears throat> so the actual 
effect of the altruism is uh, totally contained in the way that the um, the death part of the process works. Also, kind of uh, in agreement with uh, with the examples that I gave at the beginning, in the sense that um, animals may help each other to survive. They may prevent each other from death by starvation uh, to a pre by becoming prey or by um, dying from a, from a sickness or a weakness. Good, so what's happening here now? Um, again, we choose a pair of um, sites and um, then um, if they, so they are again I and J and if, uh, if J, if there's nobody, uh, then uh, the the but there is an agent at I then this agent is just removed okay so that's uh, that's plain death without any altruism involved likewise if at J there's a there's a defector as a neighbor of the of I then um, the, the agent at uh, I also dies because this D agent here doesn't help it's not an altruist it's a defector so it just doesn't care that the neighbor is dying and um, <clears throat> then the the altruistic case now if there's a c agent at j then an agent at i survives so it stays the same either c or d whatever it was the epsilon the c agent survives and otherwise with probability one minus epsilon the uh, the C agent, the neighboring agent, the altruist. Uh, okay, so here's the um, the danger of the 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 cost dying uh, um, with probability one minus epsilon, and the the benefit of the altruism, which is simply that the C or D D J agent at side i uh, does survive. And this happens with to be below one. Okay, so we have already two parameters here now. I mean, so the, the overall death process happens with probability p compared to the unit, but with rate p, sorry, it's all rate, it's all rates, with rate p compared to the, uh, to the unit rate of Of death. So we have two, two model parameters here. One is P, kind of the environmental pressure or the, uh, the uh, to help without uh, risking their own life. Okay, are there any questions so far? nothing pops up. <laughs> um, right, then I will uh, show uh, uh, the, the, the dynamics in an applet. I hope this works with this internet connection here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so here's our lattice. I initialized it with uh, just all uh, Defectors, even though the, if there were any um, cooperators, uh, their helping skill is relatively high. It's at 0 0.75, so in only one quarter of the cases that they that they help another one to survive, they will they will die themselves. Then I should also say because uh, on a finite lattice, of course, this model as I defined it has absorbing states. Uh, but I don't want to deal with them here. I never kill the last one of the kind. The last cooperator here always survives. I never remove the uh, the last one, just but just leave it there. So it's kind of a simple way. 
tweaking too much, otherwise I would a mutation rate or something like this. And the same will later happen also with the, or we'll see that the same rule holds for the for the defectors also. The, the last defector is never removed. Good. Now, so now let's explore kind of the the phase diagram here. So let's keep epsilon constant at the moment. Epsilon doesn't really play a role because there no cooper or hardly cooper is the p. So. It, to survive and uh, as you may ex have expected there will be less agents on the lattice if I change oops okay let's, let's change it here if I change the um, the P in this in this case uh, in this way but now what we also see is that the um, the uh, I can't see the mouse pointer in there, I guess. Uh, but anyway, you see that there's something red coming up. So cooperators uh, at this value of P, um, they are now able to grow and occupy some part of the lattice. And I hope that still everything is clear until now. Otherwise, there would be, while this thing is kind of equilibrating, there would be some time for, for a question here. Any questions? Can anyone just uh, just uh, press the question button anyway, so I know that, that this oh, everything okay. is still working? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Constantine. It is. Ah, okay. Hi, Maxi. <laughs> the sound is not very good, so. Ah. From that, it's um, I think it's the. Connect, uh, time to time we lose the we lose the sound, but that's okay. Yeah, the sound oh, is okay. I'm sorry about that. Your sound, which is not okay. <laughs> Whose sound is not okay? Or sorry, I think it is me, yours, Constantine. But for uh, me, you, uh, Constantine's sound is perfect, is the, but the sound of Max is not perfect. Okay, but then I shut. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> good. But at least now I know that someone's listening because it was also quiet and no one with video. On at least any video from you here. So oh, now it's very like speaking with myself here. <laughs> good. Okay, but there aren't any too sensitive or hello no okay i will just uh, i'll just continue <laughs> um good so maybe, now you see that huh yeah maybe i could uh, make a question i could ask a question yes. Please. Yes, that, yeah. Um, I think the sound sometimes is coming and going, but we can we can follow. I think my question is All about right. the, the supply of food. Um, I, I mean, you you are kind of assuming that let's say the natural supply of uh, of resources is is some um, is not in the model or is a constant thing all, all the time. If I understood well, the dynamics is on yep. the cooperators and and. Uh, Yes. So the, I mean the the food um, is not is model is not modeled directly here. I'm just I'm just okay. I just have this p which uh, um, which is the baseline death rate, and thereby the higher the p, the more difficult it is to uh, to survive and uh, for the for the agents here. But they are not really kind of locally changing the p of the food or okay. anything okay. like this. So that's. So uh, the, the model is much simpler in this case. In this sense, we don't have the the food or the predators or anything here. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Constantine. It's just uh, the P is this to survive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, good. So now, now we are. Uh, I hope you believe me that we are. Um, we have now two. Um, these two type of 
types of agents in, in, a, in some ratio here. So both are, both are present. So we have a, a coexistence phase at this value of P and then I, um, six. And then there are no defectors anymore and only cooperators. And then, of course, at some point, if the P becomes very large, no one can survive anymore, except for those that I officially keep alive in order to make the thing ergodic. Okay, so the, we basically have to sum this up. We have uh, four phases here. Let's go back to the slides to see this, or first I. And uh, yeah. So this is our phase diagram. You have the you have the two parameters p, the difficulty of survival, and the epsilon, the the operate the the um, altruists or the cooperators uh, helping skill. And uh, so what we have done right before is to to walk through this diagram on this line here. Epsilon equals zero point seven five and increasing the, the P and there are four uh, defectors and only cooperators and then extinction. Um, we can look a bit at these uh, transitions here in a moment so there but let's first uh, take another interesting effect uh, that you can't see in the previous diagram um, concentration of agents with p so basically you would assume okay the larger the p uh, uh, the, the lower the density of um, of agents in the in the stationary uh, state um, or stationary distribution. Um, well, this is actually not the, the case. So what happens is that the, at the onset of uh, cooperation, um, the fact that now these cooperators have kind of space to live there uh, overcompensates the, the death of the defectors. And so the total, let's go again to epsilon equals 0 0.75, the, the total concentration of agents, so cooperators and defectors together, uh, makes this, mon this non-monotonic behavior. So uh, as soon as you have this onset of uh, cooperation, uh, even though you keep increasing P, even though you make life more difficult, um, the, uh, the density of agents actually increases. Okay, so you try to kill them more often, but they're even more uh, cooperators, and they they protect the population from uh, from being killed. And the insight here is just to show this also for here. So um, of course, what we want to have is that this happens also for small epsilon. So when they when the cooperators are maybe still not so skilled, um, then this then this, this effect is also there. The right diagram is to is uh, for the parapro address briefly at the end um, and basically gives the same uh, quanti uh, qualitative behavior. <laughs> now briefly for these, um, for the transitions in this, uh, for the types of transitions in this 2D phase diagram, um, the first one is, a, um, is actually the, the standard contact process. So it's this, uh, transition down here on the on the p axis. So if I if I if epsilon is zero, then I basically never have cooperators, and then um, I just have the the extinction transition uh, of the of the contact process on my on my lattice. Um, so uh, what is plotted here for this transition is. 
number of um, of agents on the on the lattice over time or in the in the statistical uh, ensemble. So for the uh, for this distribution uh, for this transition, you would say it's the it's the distribution of the order order parameter, and this is in agreement with the um, with the contact process. And then you see that there. Are, um, Okay, what I should say is okay at the at the transition there this this quantity uh, fall. Um, <clears throat> and then there are these other transitions, but they seem to have all of them um, uh, seem to have different exponents. So there's uh, to make it short, there's still something to uh, to to be explored. What is what is actually going on here? And we were also asked by a referee if all this uh, all these uh, transitions in the phase diagram uh, whether they're actually of directed percolation kind and we kind of started to look into this but this is not here so this is one one uh, one thing in progress but it's interesting that uh, at least the order parameter which is not universal in the directed percolation case uh, has um, has different exponents here. So the different exponents do not contradict the, uh, that maybe all these transitions are in the directed percolation case, um, but at least they are also not of the same kind as the, the, as the standard transition of the, of the contract process, contact process. Okay, um, <clears throat> now we uh, go into an attempt to, to see if this is kind of generic, and also what we, uh, this phase diagram is kind of generic and uh, um, what we can also maybe say analytically. Um, and this is actually mostly uh, um, Naji's work. So um, I don't know if he actually joined in the meantime, he, he said he would also join the seminar. Uh, so um, if there are any questions. I'm here with you. Derek. Okay. Hi, Naji. <laughs> Good. Do you want to take over? No. <laughs> um, go on, go on. So, so no, I'll keep this. <laughs> so what, how far are we into? Okay, half an hour done. So um, I'll go a little bit longer. Um, good. So uh, now we're trying to capture this, um, this diagram here uh, with, uh, with pair approximation. Um, um, why not? Uh, why don't we do mean field first? Um, because it's um, all these or most of these models of uh, evolution of cooperation uh, in the mean field case, where everyone interacts with everyone, um, they just uh, they just have the result that the only stable solution is that there is no cooperation. Or you can also say that the, the, that's the that's the only Nash equilibrium. Um, so you need some extra ingredient, and here we have the spatial structure as the as the extra ingredient in order to to sustain cooperation. And uh, so what we do now is to uh, kind of take these take the space into account in in first order. So we go one step beyond uh, mean field, and that's uh, our purposes here is now the pair approximation, <laughs> and this can be seen as uh, 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 dynamics of the bond concentrations. Okay, so the uh, if you now consider two adjacent sites, uh, what kinds of um, what kinds of configurations are there? Well, there are six. There are these six uh, configurations. If you do not uh, I mean, if you count uh, uh, the same as a DC and so on, if you um, if you take into account this symmetry exchanging the two agents, then there are six uh, six bonds, and uh, well, one concentrations. Then um, this would be the way to go back to the to the site concentrations. To say how many CDs and empty sides there are, and um, <clears throat> just to maybe 
uh, check one more time that we understand what this what this pair approxy means pair approximation means so for instance the birth rate of overall cooperators is this it's one half uh, CE bonds because you need a CE bond, um, so a C with an adjacent empty site, in order to, uh, to perform a birth of the C agent, likewise for the D agents. And so there are, um, yes, so the, the full. Uh, um, System of equations uh, looks like looks like this. There are five equations because uh, the sixth one is just the uh, uh, the sum of them. The, um, the total sum of bonds, of course, is uh, is conserved, and uh, so you have these direct effects here of uh, birth and death in each equation, and then you have uh, you have kind of side effects. Um, due to the fact that if um, you know in the birth for instance of a C agent uh, a CE bond of course makes a transition to a CC bond uh, but then there are also three other bonds involved and uh, if you do this on the square lattice so then K will be four so these are the side effects of um, that kind of uh, where bond operations interfere with other bonds so we have this uh, we have this set of equations, and now I'll just skip over uh, all the hard analytic work. But of course, it's in the paper. Um, and uh, yeah, okay, and I'll just say that um, in order now to to get a handle on this, you can start by uh, by setting the the number of cooperators to zero and consider only what's happening with the with the defectors, get the stable, stable uh, stationary solution. Likewise, for the other case that there are no defectors, um, see what the stable, stable stationary solution for the for the concentration of defectors is. And then uh, you can kind of insert them into the full scenario and ask when they are stable given that again the the other type of uh, of agent is also there and so step by step you can then uh, work your way to this uh, to this phase diagram which is now the result of pair approximation for k equals four for the for the model so the same type of diagram as we had for the numerically obtained for the for the square lattice at the beginning um and uh yes this looks uh this looks uh the same in structure so we have the same um the same phases we have uh the same um point down here where they uh where they all meet which is the at epsilon equals zero and the um and the and transit the transition point of the um of the contract process. So we think we have um, captured the, the concentrations that arise in the model uh, pretty well with the uh, with the pair approximation. We've also then uh, just to see if this is really generic. Okay, so you know, on the one hand, we have pair approximation, which takes into account only uh, first order spatial effects. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the square lattice. So we put this also on, for instance, uh, ran um, random regular graphs, and then we get pretty much uh, the same and getting closer to this pair approximation diagram, the, the larger we go in, in system size. Good, so this is a pretty, uh, generic phase diagram for this uh, for this simple model of, uh, of uh, altruism. Then I have one more thing because now you can ask, okay, what uh, what's uh, happening uh, if the survivability is not the same everywhere in the world or not the same everywhere in the 
the habitat of that species that we're considering here. Um, so spatially inhomogeneous uh, parameter P, some places where it's easy and some places uh, where it's uh, difficult to survive. Let's look at this also in, a, in an applet. I hope you can see that, otherwise just uh, signal me and I will also again know that you're still there and the connection hasn't broken down. Um, good, so what I, what I uh, hello, yes. There was somebody saying something? No, no, Hello? nothing, sorry. Okay. But I heard you, I think Emilio, no? <laughs> um, good, was the mouse pointer here. So um, now you have the, um, the situation modified from before, uh, because now the P depends on the, uh, on the horizontal position, on the x coordinate, if you wish, uh, on this lattice. Um, so it's largest in the middle. Can you see the mouse pointer here still? Yes. So here, uh, p equals one in the middle, and uh, and then it just goes linearly down to zero, um, or to almost zero at the at the side. So at the at the edges. And this is still wrapped around uh, topology. Act um, um, that you get close, that uh, getting close to extinction. Um, uh, also reproduces the uh, the uh, the presence of of cooperators. So in this area, um, where you kind of where the, the the factors would would actually not be able to survive, um, the, the cooperators can they also live, and this effect becomes uh, stronger as we make the epsilon. But this model predicts then when you consider the spatially inhomogeneous P is that um, at, at the edge of those kind of inhabitable regions, um, uh, cooperation should arise most likely, most easily. And this, just to appreciate that one more, more time here, we have a, have a plot of this now. And what I haven't said yet is that uh, the, the, again, the overall concentration of agents in this, um, uh, in this case now also behaves non-monotonically with space. Okay, so what we had previously had in the phase diagram as we would vary the P that increasing p uh, suddenly the number of agents uh, does increase in a certain regime even though we also increase p and we make it harder to survive that also we have we have now spatially here so as we pass through this difficult but not impossible to live region suddenly there will be again more agents than before and I guess this would be this effect would be more pronounced if the lattice were not um, not so small here but remains to be seen and yes I think I will stop here and uh, not do a summary because I think on the way I already summarized the the phase diagram so now it's it's open for a question thank you very much Okay. Thank you. Oh. Ah.
Yes, I mean, I, um, I don't see any green boxes, but whoever wants to say something can say something, or the chairman will just close it. <laughs> Well, you you are the, the the chair of the, the boss of the session also. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 <laughs> I just don't. I see only. Uh, I mean, so I see only three of you. Maybe there are also only three left. But uh, and I don't see any green boxes. So there aren't any. If there aren't any questions, then. Uh, uh, ah. Perhaps Constantine. Uh, I don't know if, if everyone is aware, given the topic of the seminar, that uh, Robert May passed away yesterday. So, oh, okay, that's yeah, so thank you, Marcy. Someone very important in this, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, as I said, I skipped over all the all the references, but of course, uh, the, the first uh, um, spatial model like this on a, um, actually a cellular automaton model, so a deterministic uh, spatial model of uh, for the evolution of cooperation that was. By no work and me, yes. Then question is what next along these lines? Uh, yeah, one uh, one thing that's actually already uh, there that makes it even more interesting is now to include predator in this predators in this um, uh, scenario. So instead of uh, say, instead of fixing the the p, um, the the p is actually the density of a um, uh, of a third type of of agent who predate, predates on on these two, and then you uh, you even get effects of uh, of bias stability, and um, actually some something that looks a bit similar to um, uh, to predator prey oscillations. So that's one thing, and the other thing that we we still have in store is, of course, to to explore a bit better these uh, these transitions if they are if they are really um, directed percolation or maybe not. Maybe we have something different here. Okay, thanks, Constantine. Thank you, Maxim. Or well, Naji, do we do you have if you're still there? Do you have any other outlook that we? No, no. Anything else. Just, just curious to see what was your plans for the future. No, I was asking Naji if he had. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Only one comment. If uh, we have we have another approximation, uh, we we did like another mean field approximation, but local mean field approximation, and then I, we. We show that there are other, other mechanisms, but are for finite uh, finite systems. So we can have a coexistence of cooperators and defectors for small small systems, uh, even if we keep uh, min field. Okay, if just uh, if yes. if one one is is interested in that aspect. But you have explained everything very very well. <laughs> so. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Naji, what, what do you mean by local mean field? Is the same mean field we, we, we are using in our, <laughs> our work? So it's like it's like uh, mm, to let the, the different densities depends locally on the space. So there are, that depends on like, the concentration of cooperators on the vector depend on the on side lattice, but still we we assume mean, mean field like, like mean field. We have price correlations without correlations. Uh, yes. While in the pair approximation, there is no space dependence in our pair approximation. All right. Any other questions, comments? Gabor? Yes. <laughs> Gabor? Maybe you have to switch on the mic. I can't hear you. Can anyone else hear Gabor? I cannot hear Gabor. 
He he is saying that he is writing it oh. in the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, chat is. He's asking, what about increasing the interaction radius? Ah, yeah, okay. Um, yes, very good question. <laughs> uh, I mean, I guess the, um, I mean, the, okay, so the pair approximation uh, shouldn't, change we just have a different number of neighbors um, and uh, i don't know what happens in the um on the lattice um yes well yeah that's a good a good, good suggestion yes i take this as a suggestion and not as a question <laughs> yes thank it you it's not easy to, to answer this question no, it's not not it's not not trivial we don't know yeah, but do you agree that the uh, that we just have to, for instance, if we take eight neighbors instead of four, then uh, we just have to put eight into the, I mean, k equals eight into the pair approximation? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the, okay, of course, the pair approximation doesn't only qualitatively captures anyway what is happening on the lattice, but maybe um, in, in principle, the the effect on I mean the base effect should just be that you have a you have a kind of denser lattice, so to speak. I mean a, a lattice with higher uh, coordination number. Hmm? But if, no, if you so in the sense uh, for, for for big K, let's say, or for a large number of neighbors, you will you have to recover the main field. So it is not trivial. Um, yes, and I think we already in our pair approximation, if we let the k, k grow uh, become large. That should be the case. Yes, then. maybe, yes. Or what happened? And then from the it doesn't matter if you are on a uh, on a two D lattice with uh, coordination number eight, or you are on a cubic lattice. That should be <laughs> it. Just doesn't enter the pair approximation, of course. No. A cubic lattice, no. Okay, six. Uh, okay, so on a on a four D on a four D lattice. Okay. Any other questions at this point? I don't see any, so then I think we can otherwise shout now or okay. make, it, make it green. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, Emilio or? No. Okay, good. Then, well, thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks, Constantine. Yeah, thank you thank all. You. And okay, see thank you, you at the Constantine. Next online seminar. Okay, and stay safe thank and you. healthy. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.